I'm not, I'm not uh, hiding that the empathy with the coach is not good. I'm, I'm, I'm honest. You don't have a good relationship with him. I'm not mean good relationship. The empathy is not, it's not good. Let's say. Do you think he respects you? I think he don't. He don't respect the way I should deserve. Um, if there was any doubt whether or not Cristiano Ronaldo was never going to play for Manchester United again. I think that doubt is now completely and utterly gone. This is my reaction to the second part of this full... F I don't know how many days he's been talking to Piers Morgan now, Cristiano Ronaldo. The second part of the interview was released and he spoke in depth. You know, we got the, we got the sexy headlines that Piers Morgan dropped out earlier during the week. But we've seen the full interview now. I'm going to run through all the key points from this interview. You saw the clip there. Ronaldo and Ten Hag's relationship tsh, snapped, broken, beyond repair. No conversation, no amount of plasters or anything is going to repair that relationship. Ronaldo can never play for Manchester United again. So I don't know what that means. I know what the next steps are, but can we terminate the contract? Will we terminate the contract? Do we have legal grounds? Do we have? Let's get into that later on, but I'm going to run through all the main quotes because, as I said, if there was any sort of iota of doubt before it, I think it's completely gone now. And, and something I want to say quickly before I start here, I, I talked about it yesterday. And the leading questions that Piers Morgan, like, he's such a scumbag, man. I, I, I think Ronaldo knows. I, I, I'm guessing Ronaldo knows and he's happy to do it. But Ronaldo does not want to accept that he is not the best player in the world anymore. He, he anybody, who, who suggests, anybody who suggests that he isn't, they're wrong, utterly wrong, and he refuses to listen to that. And that's something that really came across in that interview. Uh, and it's uh, unfortunately he's not dealing with the fact that he is mortal. The age has caught up with him this season. And I think, I, 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 and this is just a personal opinion. This is not a professional opinion. It feels like the way that Cristiano Ronaldo kept himself in the spotlight, in the game after the death of his son, that it feels like he hasn't had time to process it and, and to and to grieve he and he's and he's kept himself in in the limelight it feels like there's something inside of him still because something's changed and it's uh yeah I, i'll run through the quotes here now and of course that, that that's where the empathy comes from and i'm not sure whether he's talking about ten Hag and the empathy there but in terms of ronaldo the biggest the main story i suppose that's led to all of this really was ronaldo leaving the stadium against tottenham hotspur and this is what ronaldo said about that he said, it's something that I regret to leave the stadium. Let's say I regret, but in the same way, I felt provoked by the coach. Not allowed for me, a coach, to put me in the game for three minutes. Sorry, I'm not that kind of player. Yes, you are. You are contracted by a club. The coach wants to bring you on for 30 seconds, for three seconds, 0.3 seconds. He can do whatever he wants to. He is the coach. And he tried to compare the situations... Um, I'll speak about it a little bit later. It was City and, and 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 Ten Hag saying he didn't bring him on out of respect. And Spurs, they diff they are different situations. We were losing six three at City. We were winning two 0 at home at Old Trafford. They are very different situations. If you can't see that, again, blinded. Um, he was talking about look, me and eight players left the preseason game early, but they mentioned only my name. No, they didn't. Ten Hag even said it in his post when he was asked about it. He goes, look, other players left as well. Are we speaking to them too? Let's not just talk about Ronaldo. I specifically remember Ten Hag defending him there and saying, look, I know I know Ronaldo did wrong here, but there was lots of other players there too. I remember Ten Hag defending him there. He said, look, the feeling he, Ten Hag, always mentioned to me that I didn't need the preseason, so I should wait for my opportunity. I don't know that's lost in translation there. But you don't do the same procedures to every player. I'm not going to mention players. Uh, something that Ronaldo said, he feels as fit as he's ever felt before, that he's ready to have an amazing World Cup. I suppose we'll see that very, very soon. But dude, you're not. We've seen it. We saw that you didn't have a preseason. It was obvious that you didn't have a preseason. Even more obvious because we're playing a style of football now or trying to play a style of football which exacerbates his weaknesses. He needed preseason. He did, he doesn't think that he needed it. And he doesn't think that he needs to because of what he's done before. Because he's Cristiano Ronaldo. And he's talking about the youngsters having a sense of entitlement. Pot kettle black. I really don't understand in the beginning because I didn't do preseason. I don't start. But going, I oh, sorry, I really understand. Not not not. That I really understand the fact that he didn't do that preseason. But going further than that, other things happen that people don't know. I'm not hiding that the empathy with the coach is not good. If I'm honest, 
Ten Hag doesn't respect me the way I should deserve, but it is what it is. This is probably why the game against Tottenham, I left. And it feels like Ronaldo wants individual Ronaldo feels he deserves individual treatment because of what has preceded him. Now that's what makes it difficult to manage big personalities and big egos in dressing rooms because it's not a one size fits all, and that's down to individual management and team collective management. But it feels like he's wanted, like he, like he was exempt from rules, like like he. It's it, it's odd. It, it, there's quite a lot of this interview. That, this second part of the interview, I just felt it really showed me where Ronaldo is mentally at the moment now. And he's just not accepting that he's not still the best player in the world. Look how many pounds I've got in my... I'm not sure... That, that first question to open the second part of the interview, Piers Morgan asking about what have you got more? More Instagram followers and more millions in a bank account. I'm like, ah. Oh. Fucking hell, what a weird dick swinging exercise that was. Oh, strange. This is Ronaldo speaking about that te- that not being brought on against City, against City. He said his excuses. I see his excuses. I saw many things. I don't want to criticise him. He can have a different opinion than me. They choose the players that they think is better for the team. He didn't bring him on out of respect against City because we were losing 6-3 away at City. Bringing Ronaldo on in that situation would have been disrespectful. Bringing him on 2-0 up. At home, Old Trafford's rocking against Spurs. It's not the same situation. Don't tell me it is. He said, look, there you go. And he disagrees with it completely. And this is what he said about being suspended. He goes, I was very, 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 very disappointed for the communication of Manchester United. To be honest, I never had a problem with any club, with any coach. And they suspended me for three days, which I felt was a lot. You refused to come on. You said no to the manager. You walked out of the stadium. The second time you've done it this season. What do you expect? How can you possibly be surprised that you were punished for that? And it's because of this mentality that Ronaldo clearly has. I'm the best, man. Uh, Look, I'm kind of exempt from the rules. I can kind of do what I want. Look, I've got five ban on doors. Won loads of Champions Leagues. Doesn't matter what I'm doing now. Let's talk about what I've done before. Which is, I feel, of course, that's made this indomitable figure that Ronaldo is. But it's also, it's also turning into his downfall this season at Manchester United. I think that's what we're seeing. This is a strange one. I remember arriving home and Cristiano Jr. seeing me and saying, Daddy, you're not going to the game? He goes, no, because the, the club punished me. He said, how are they going to punish you if you're the best player in the world? Spoiler alert. You're not the best player in the world anymore, Ronaldo. And if you haven't realised it now, it's going to be... It's going to be like a cold shower shock when it hits you. Because it will. At some point, that penny will drop. Speaking about here, he goes, don't tell me that the top players, the guys who want everything, the key players will play three minutes. Come on, this is unacceptable. After what they keep saying before, that they respect me, that they do this, that they do that. And again, he feels that because he's Cristiano Ronaldo, that he can't just come on for three minutes. It's not possible that he's exempt for, because of what he's done before. He deserves different treatment. And that's not how it works. It's not how it works in team in team sports. It's just not. It doesn't matter who you are. He said, yes, I apologize to my teammates, teammates for the situation. I did an Instagram post. I regret it. He's saying they regret, regret to leave the stadium. But if you watch the whole interview, he's like, I regretted it. Or did I? I'm not. Really, sh- he doesn't regret it. He's saying that he regrets it because he wants to save face. Uh, I don't regret the decisions to not come on. He's just said it right there. The coach didn't have respect for me. This is why the relationship is that way. He keeps saying in the press that he like he he comes to like that he come to me. He likes me. Blah blah blah. But that's only for the press. Ronaldo is one million percent in breach of contract. It's whether or not they can, can they can class it as a breach of contract. And of gross misconduct. Because I personally think it is. I just don't know whether it's a legal standpoint. He's just... He's, if Ronaldo had done this interview after he left United, well, I'm not sure there would have been many people that would have found it really offensive. But to do it whilst being a player? Fucking hell, you're talking about a lack of respect. Wow. And he's like, well, I was provoked. You're an adult. You're in charge of your own actions. 
what you're seeing here from Ronaldo was a lot of finger pointing. And no, not one finger at any point was pointed towards himself in a 90-minute interview. It tells you everything you need to know. Ten Hag says things for the press, but the press say what they think is good to protect him and United. What a load of bullshit. They have been trying to drag Ten Hag under at any point and hold his head under water. That's what the press do. We've been witnessing it all season. Guff. Ronaldo here. I hope the Manchester United fans have been in my side or been on my side. You burnt that bridge, my friend. You have burnt that bridge. Bridge. You burnt the bridge with Ten Hag. Well, it doesn't really matter you burnt the bridge with the owners. But I think you burnt the bridge with the fans. Nobody's perfect. Episodes in life we all have as part of human beings. Yes, yeah, sure. But you don't go and do interviews like this. What they say the last three months is garbage and wrong. They say that uh, he was saying that look, I've had I've had tons of offers. Where are these offers then? I have many clubs. No, not many, just a few clubs that wanted to sign me. What clubs then? Name them. Ronaldo's very adamant that this is maybe these are the lies that he was he was threatening to release a video about that he never released it. Maybe let's find out about these offers. Let's see what happens after the World Cup. I think he suggested that if he wins the World Cup with Portugal that that he might retire. Then he was saying that he might play until he's forty. I don't know. He's talking about that they criticise me when I speak. They criticise me when I don't speak. You're Ronaldo, man. You the first question you were asked by Piers Morgan there was what do you have more of? Instagram followers or millions in the bank account. When you are the man in the spotlight, expect that spotlight to be fierce. It's part and parcel of being in the spotlight. Every pro has its con. And that's what balances it all out. You could be a regular Joe going to work at Tesco's at a cash point. No one's going to give a shit what you do. But if you're Cristiano Ronaldo, people will care what you do. They will criticise what you do. And you have to walk the straight and narrow. It's tough. I didn't say it was easy. But it's not. He said this at the end. It's hard. It's hard for me to say whether I, I w- that I will not be back at Manchester United. It's not hard, Ronaldo, and I'll say it for you right now. You'll never play for Manchester United again. It's done. It's dusted. And wow, what a way to go out! As I said before, and I've said all week, this is going to be taught. You're witnessing history here, not the good variety. It's the end of the interview. Manchester United now are poised to respond. Will it happen quickly? I don't know whether the United will take more legal advice and let it. But seeing as this thing's been fucking going on for five days, it feels like United have had plenty of time to get that advice. Maybe there will be a quick response. But in my opinion, it's done. It's dusted. I don't think he plays for the club again. He's burned the bridges with the manager and, in my opinion, the majority of the fans. Over to you, United.